So hey Mario, how you been? It's been oh. a while. Hey. It's Paul? It's Paul, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. It's but you know, somebody's been disconnected a while. I get it. I get it. Speaking of disconnected, looks like the NFL's shutting everything down. So like everything's shutting everything down. Yeah. We should shut, shut down. down this episode right now. <laughs> We're gonna cancel hashtag. Yeah, right. Which may it's it, it may be a lot because like you're thinking about the influx of individuals that do produce content now. You think yeah. that's gonna be uh, in high demand now? Right. Yeah, I think a lot of people are gonna realize quickly that they don't have a lot to talk about. I don't think that's a problem for us. <laughs> <laughs> usually, have plenty to talk about. There's usually some pressing issue. Yeah. Well, I think. There's some interesting stuff that's going on, and you know the free agency period. The Bills have already kicked in re-signing a few players. Restructuring Croft was brilliant. Yes. I know a lot of people will say, "Well, you know, you're going to cut Tyler Croft anyway." Yeah, but you basically what what you did was you voided the last year on his deal, and the money that it was going to cost you to get rid of him, you just gave to him anyway. That's yeah. really what you did. You said, "Okay, well, it's going to cost us this much to get rid of you." This year or next year anyway, so let's just give you that money now and we'll call it a day. And yeah. This is your last year on your deal. So now, it, I mean, it's, it's, it was a wash. It was a total wash. I mean, it, how Bean is able to do all of this stuff is, is so interesting. But how do you, okay, you restructure Star. You extend your exclusive rights for agents, mm-hmm. which is a no-brainer. no-brainer. It really no-brainer. is. Like People are like, oh, oh they'd sign. Are they Robert gonna... Foster, Levi Wallace. These guys couldn't sign anywhere else. No, but it's there's no harm, no foul. It's not break. Right. You're not breaking the bank to get these kids no. because they're exclusive rights free agents. Right. They they were contributors to your team at one at some capacity or another. Levi Wallace was your starting second corner mm-hmm. for majority of the year. So, yep. um, everything else intertwined in it. Spencer Long, I, I think, was was shocking to me that um, they picked up his option. Yeah. Which, yeah. This is fine. I mean, you could still cut him. Right. It's not a big yeah. deal. It, uh, picking up his option didn't guarantee. I mean, it didn't. It didn't add signing bonus money, right? Like picking up his option just said, "Yeah, we'll bring you back." That's yeah. all. I, I mean, from a guarantee standpoint, it's not that big a deal. Um, the uh, bringing back oh, so classy. <laughs> bringing back um, Quentin Spain on. For a three-year deal, we had talked about that before. I tried to find that in another episode. I don't know if maybe it just never made it into an episode. It was the rapid fire. Oh, that's why I never found it. So it was like 45 minutes I long. We're not doing that again. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah, it was, the, uh, it was, a, it was an episode, uh, rapid fire, up here if you guys want to check it out, uh, even though you guys are starving for our content. I think that's, a lot of that stuff still works. <laughs> it does. A lot of that stuff we talked <laughs> about. Uh, no, it was. I was saying to sign him for three for 20. I think I just threw it out, three for 20. And you were um, – Opposed to the uh, the length, not the money. Right. right. So uh, I think you proposed a two for ten. <clears throat> so uh, it looks like the bills were watching, and they just settled. Yeah, that's it. You know I mean? Hey, all about com- life's about compromise, man. <laughs> Life is about compromise. If we're making Bean's job easier, you're welcome. That's all right. Just put us on the payroll. Then. <laughs> I like it because he's still young. You saw his impact on Dawkins. Right. His impact on the team itself. Yeah. It was. Um, I'm not, I'm not mad about three years. I'm not mad about it. I think Spain's had a positive impact on the team. Otherwise, they wouldn't have brought him back. And he was a guy I don't think was a character sign. He was a very solid player that was just happened to be out there. And here's another example of the Bills leveraging one-year deals. Look at the Norman deal. Like, what does Norman do better than Wallace? Nothing. From, from a skill set standpoint. Nothing. Is he faster than Wallace? No. no. Did you look at it? I can't remember who it was, but somebody put the combine numbers of Norman and Wallace. Oh, Really? Next to each other, and oh, they're identical. That. Yeah, like okay. I, I hadn't seen four that. six. Yeah, like it, he's not. But what the the thing about Norman that was confusing to me is that he is a Wallace player, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you are you doing like a Frank Gore type situation where you want him to mentor Wallace because you think you really believe in Wallace? I, you know, I'm 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 going to disagree with you a little bit there because. You look at the player Norman was under McDermott, and he was a world class player. And then you take him out. Thank you. You too. And then you take him out of that scenario and bring him over to Washington, where he had like four defensive back coaches in three years. You know, like it's you take him out of that circumstance, and you see that he was the player that was drafted 
Like you look at the player that he turned into in Washington, you're like, okay, well, that's where he was drafted. That's the player he was. But under McDermott, different scenario. Something about that system seemed to click. Now, again, this isn't a Sean McDermott defense. No, it's not. But if anybody can talk to corners, it's Leslie Frazier and Sean yes. McDermott. So uh, they, they I, have... I agree and I disagree. I agree because on paper it is confusing. The two the two have similar strengths. Yes. Right? It's not a man corner. It's a no, zone corner. Right. So if you plan on playing a lot more zone in 2020, okay. Right. What does that mean? That means your front four has to generate pass rush. Right. So does the signing of Norman signal the fact that they're going to go after a big name and you get rid of Trent Murphy? Well, you're losing Shaq Lawson and Jordan Phillips. Like, you have to just assume you're losing both of them at this point. Which is weird now because are you really losing them? Uh, because I think so. of what they're able to do, what they're able to, how they're able to sign. Like, people were talking about, oh, the, the Spain deal, three for 15. That's great. Well, Shaq that, and Phillips uh-huh. are probably going to want 15 a year. Yeah. So they're not going to yeah. want. <laughs> well, Phillips is sneaky. Like, that Phillips deal is going to sneak up on the national media because I don't think they they probably see his, you know, almost 10 sacks as sort of, a, you know, an aberration, right? Yeah. yeah. On the low snap count, they probably see it as, you know, this was this is not, these numbers aren't real. But sacks are sacks in my opinion. Yeah. You know, like, that's it. Um, it is about being in the right place at the right time, tackling the right person, right? That's what a sack is. It's a guy in the right place at the right time, tackling the right well, person. Well, yeah, they made they made a they made a comment about it though. They said uh, six of those sacks came in two games. Yeah. So how much of an impact was he sure. out there? I think he's I think he's a great impact. I think he, he plays the run as well, um, you know. But you got to think some of those sacks did fall fall to him, like you said, right place, right time. Was it a was it a product of guys paying attention to other guys on that line mm-hmm. was it a blitz right where um you know somebody they had a twist or a stun inside you know a lot of things factor into that so um well I, I think one of the things that we're starting to see is the bills are working hard to retain their own and restructure for future years so when you have a, a you know uh, when you have a player from the outside of the organization that the bills are looking to bring in right how do you sell that player when they can't come they can't come visit the facility. That's huge. So how do you how do you get them here? Well, the the I think the one of Bean's strengths is being able to communicate, mm-hmm. even if you're not there. Right. So that will benefit the Buffalo Bills more than I think other teams because we've seen how some of his off season signings, some of the magic he's been able to work, and what people have seen from the outside. Listen, you got here two years ago, you made the playoffs, you won ten games, uh, you have a. a young nucleus, and you have a lot of guys that you, you sign on one-year prove-it deals. Listen, I want to prove myself, not only, but it, it seems a different narrative that guys are trying, usually guys are trying to prove themselves and then sign somewhere else. Right. Now they're proving themselves, like, I want to stay here. Mm-hmm. So, with Spain being one of those yeah. guys, um, uh, you know, Jordan Phillips being a guy who went there, got his, you know, he's going to get his money, you know, um, Shaq, you know, they, they could t- you could definitely say that they know how to motivate a guy. Mm-hmm. So they're like, hey, we're not going to pick up your option, but you we'll know. talk. Yes. We'll talk. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, it's- so, well, let me ask this then. So if, if Bean calls an agent and offers an agent for a player a one-year deal worth $8 million, let's just throw out arbitrary number, position player, doesn't matter. Gotcha. Right? Okay. A one-year deal for $8 million, but the Dolphins call and offer a two-year deal for – $14 million, does the one-year Bean deal carry more value than the two-year Dolphin deal? Not from a per salary a year standpoint, because let's be real, right? Most two-year contracts are really just nice one-year contracts for a lot of players, right? Yes. Um, so does Bean calling to offer a one-year deal, is that starting to carry clout within the league where an agent goes, well, Buffalo called, instead of, oh, Buffalo called. Yeah, instead, the, it's like, oh, hey, just to let you know, the Buffalo they offered you a one year and Buffalo's done a good job of turning those one year contracts or those contract years into something for players. Um, do you think that carries a little bit more clout than it used to? It, it definitely, the narrative of Buffalo is changed. Yeah. I agree um, with that. They're not going to say, Oh, Buffalo called. They're going to say, Hey, Buffalo wants to offer you this. The only reservation that I have with that is the, the ability of being to double down. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're not going to say like, you want to talk about Yeldon. Signs a two-year deal, they draft a guy. You know, you want to talk about Croft. Signs a deal, they draft a guy. 
Right. You know, uh, you know, they 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 get the one year deal for Phillips. They draft Oliver. Mm-hmm. Like, are they? Am I just their insurance policy, or do they really want right. me there? That's the only question I think a lot of teams are going to be asking. A lot of guys are going to be asking the agents. Well, they want a one-year deal, but are they planning on drafting this guy? But it was great that they drafted those players because look at the positional look at look at the position injuries, right? You signed yes. Jordan Phillips, you lose Harrison Phillips, but you drafted Ad Oliver. You're covered, right? Exactly. You sign you sign Frank Gore and TJ Yeldon. You cut McCoy and you draft Singletary. By week eight, Singletary is your starter. Yeldon's now you know, Yeldon's a healthy scratch. Right, he's a healthy scratch every week. <laughs> you look at Tyler Croft, they're like, oh, hey, we signed Tyler Croft. Well, you did draft Austin Knox and Sweeney, and Croft goes out. So it, Bean has proven in, in his brief history, right, that just because they sign a free agent doesn't mean they're not going to draft that player in the draft. Typically, it seems like to me they it's... sign a player and then they invest a pick in it. Um, not yeah. always a first round pick because you look at Allen and Edmonds. And you're like, okay, well they didn't sign a those quarterback. Those were needs. I, I agree. Well, right. I mean, no, what's and, what I'm saying is those were those were like needs from each side of the ball. They're like, listen, right. we need these foundational players. Here. Right. Well, and Oliver was, you had the chance to take the best player available. Yeah. And you did. Right. Oliver's best player available. Mm-hmm. So uh, the fact that he played defensive end or defensive tackle was just that's where he, that's where he played. He wasn't a quarterback. He wasn't a linebacker. So he was going to be yep. the best player available. Mm-hmm. So. Now that free agency is coming to unleash soon, do you think Buffalo has the network of players to be able to get in enough guys' ears to say, hey, listen, Buffalo's really where you want to be? They're, they're, they have a <laughs> – on their roster, but I guess it's like every roster, mm-hmm. they have guys that were sprinkled all over the league. Sure. So they're able to make those calls and maybe the communication and then the culture. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about it, but the, the culture being what it is – these are positive guys. They could probably get in the ears and have a bigger influence on some of the free agents that are coming up. So um, it, it'll all come down to numbers after that. Well, you know? it's it's fascinating because I know a couple of years ago we were looking at what Cleveland was doing and saying, wow, Cleveland's being really smart. Look at all these draft picks. They're going to build this stockpile, this roster yeah. of these drafted players. But that doesn't, that doesn't build you connections in the league. No. It doesn't. And, and the Bills aren't there. Even though the Bills have been able to move and shake around the draft, um, the network of players that they have is still pretty vast. Yeah. Um, so, at free agency coming up being short, I'm happy Beans the salesman. Yeah. <laughs> right. If this was, if this was, um, uh, who would be a good example of a GM that that would Buddy Nix? Do you think Buddy Nix would be able to call players and convince them to come to Buffalo more than Brandon Bean? I don't know. I don't think so. You don't think so? I think Polian. Pol. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I think Polian, but not not Nix. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know what though, Nick's. I I really didn't invest a lot of time into. So I guess I, I can I can take myself out of this question. Okay. I'll ask you that. Okay. Would you think Nick's is better than Bean? Yeah, I I trust Bean to sell sand or camel. <laughs> like I just he can I sell trust. a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. <laughs> <laughs>